very warm welcome to St. Matthew's for our service of Choral Evensong. This is the last uh, Choral Evensong of term, so it has an end of term feel, but it's also a very special occasion because we welcome uh, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, uh, who is going to give our thought for the evening, the end of the service. Sir Lindsay is uh, holding one of the ancient offices of state, the Speaker of the House of Commons, which he holds with distinction uh, and has won respect and affection across the House of Commons, uh, employing uh, wisdom and uh, good humour and courtesy. And uh, that's a hallmark that is appreciated in our public life today. Ted will say a little more before Sir Lindsay speaks to us. But meanwhile, the service continues uh, without interruption in the order of service you have before you. And we sit now as the choir sing the psalm 111. Here begins the 26th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. He sets up victory like walls and bulwarks. Open the gates so that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. Those of steadfast mind you keep in peace. In peace because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord God you have an everlasting rock. For he has brought low the inhabitants of the height. The lofty city he lays low, he lays it low to the ground. 
casts it to the dust, the foot tramples it, the feet of the poor, the steps of the needy. The way of the righteous is level. O just one, you make smooth the path of the righteous. In the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait for you. Your name and your renown are the soul's desire. My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. Here ends the first lesson.
Here begins the 12th verse of the 8th chapter of the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the, the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Here ends the second lesson.
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
light and our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. was glad when they said unto me words from Psalm 122 set to music by Charles <coughs> Hubert Parry.
Let us pray. Let us pray firstly for peace upon the face of the earth and continuing our prayers for an end to the conflict in Ukraine. We pray for those who have lost family or homes or livelihood. And as we here enjoy the blessings of peace, we remember those living under the fear of war. Lord of all the earth, be present with the peoples of Ukraine at this time of danger, fear and conflict. Grant that wise and peaceable counsels may yet prevail and give to all suffering nations the freedom they desire and deserve. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for all engaged in our political life, for all members of Parliament, for all public servants, that righteousness, justice and integrity might flourish in our national life. The prayer that is said daily in the House of Commons. Lord, the God of righteousness and truth, grant to our King and his government, to members of Parliament, and all in positions of responsibility, the guidance of your spirit. May they never lead the nation wrongly through love of power, desire to please, or unworthy ideals, but laying aside all private interests and prejudices, keep in mind their responsibility to seek to improve the condition of all humankind. So may your kingdom come, and your name be hallowed. Amen. Amen. And we pray this evening for all who are suffering, for the sick in body, mind or spirit, for those who are alone or fearful, for those who mourn. And we pray for those who are on our hearts and in our thoughts. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. Prayer for our families and our homes. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, this place and all our homes, and drive far from them all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell herein to preserve us in peace. May thy blessing be upon us evermore, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, it's my job and indeed my pleasure to welcome our speaker this evening, the Right Honourable Sir Lindsay Hoyle, Speaker of the House of Commons. And by way of formal introduction, I can tell you, as I'm sure you know, that he has been an MP since 1997 for Chorley, he was Deputy Speaker for nine years between 2010 and 2019 and is now the Speaker. And I could, of course, also tell you that if you don't follow his Instagram account, may I recommend it? It is both fascinating and you get the occasional glimpse of one of his many pets, all of which have names based on uh, significant political figures of the last 50 years. Maybe. Um, I should also this evening thank uh, the MacDonald Agape Foundation for their generous grant that means these even songs can go ahead, particularly for the wonderful music that we have experienced this evening and indeed for the wonderful wine that I hope you will join us to experience this evening. We are grateful to them and grateful to you for coming. 
So, without further ado, our speaker for this evening, Mr. Speaker. Can I say thank you for that wonderful introduction? And I'm sure Attlee will be just as proud as I am over the words that he said. Attlee's the cat, by the way. Can I still say what an honour it is for me tonight to address you at St Matthew's Church during choral evening song and in the thought for the evening slot. Looking at topics suggested to me, I thought I might reflect for a few minutes on how we can disagree well. After all, it is not something that we always achieve in the House of Commons. But more seriously though, I think my starting point has to come from the maiden speech made by a dear friend and former colleague, Geoff Cox, who was taken so cruelly from us in 2016. A new wonderful MP, who had such vision, such passion, a person who was going to achieve great things politically. And I always think of when I was told and about the many of the things she said in the brief time she was in the Commons were so meaningful. But none more so than her comment. We are far more, far more united and are far more in common with each other than things that divide us. And that will always ring with me forever. And how true that is. However testy, and bad temper, tempered the chamber becomes at times. The main reason most of us are there is to make a difference to our constituents, our way of life and our country. That was certainly Jo's ethos. She had so much to offer the world. Her murder is a testament to what happens when hatred, prejudice, and not seeing each other's point of view take over. So if I may be so bold, I would like to track back some of the worst behaviours and discourse we've seen in recent times. To Brexit. Since the referendum in 2016, it feels like the whole country has been at war with itself. The issues of whether to remain or leave the European Union is one that has polarised this country. It's divided parties. It's divided communities. But even more so, it divided families. It increased the casework for MPs and their staff. It certainly caused great battles in the chamber. And to encourage lots of procedural shenanigans with each other trying to find devious ways to get one over the other opponent or to elevate their position. On whichever side you stand, I personally believe much of the ill temper and partisanship, and if I dare say it, sheer nastiness we have seen on occasions can be tracked back to the debates around the Brexit issue. It is why when I was elected Speaker of the House of Commons in 2019, towards the end of Brexit, I was determined to try and improve the culture and support more kindness and tolerance and respect of each other. And of course, there is always going to be the heat in the chamber. I will never try to let it boil over. And of course, it can be rowdy and loud, but that does not mean we cannot be respectful and trust each other with courtesy and listen. Unfortunately, what was going on in the chamber during those Brexit years has had an effect of whipping up a social media pylon against our parliamentarians. For me, one of the biggest tragedies of the last general election was how many MPs, particularly female MPs, from all parties, considered throwing in the towel. For many of us, it was not the long hours, time apart from our families, or the need to seek a better work-life balance, even though we should expect it at times. It was because of the relentless abuse 
and threats and intimidation that they received, largely through social media. We could have lost some of the most hard-working, well-meaning, authoritative constituency MPs and former ministers for good. So let us not forget, it was hatred like this that resulted in the death of Joe Cox seven years ago. And another great friend was Sir David Amis five years later. So since I became Speaker, I have worked hard to make our parliamentary village, both inside the chamber and outside, a nicer, more tolerant place to work. I've tried to make staff feel valued, because they should be. By walking the floor, showing an interest in the work, finding out about their needs, and about what more we can do to make lives better. I've engaged with trade unions, invited them to join the House of Commons Commission meetings, so they have a direct line from staff to management. We've also introduced an HR department for MP staff to reduce that feeling of isolation from Westminster, to give them backup of employment advice and other support when they need it. As far as I'm concerned, this is our parliamentary village. It is a place many of us spend most of our time, whether you are a member of parliament, a house staff member, or you work for an MP in a constituency, or you're a member of the press, or the security. You are a key member of our community. I do not think that the onus to disagree well is on us as your elected members of parliament. After all, we represent you in many ways, be it for help, advice, or to push a point of view. You look to us. So if we behave badly in the chamber, why is it such a surprise when people outside behave badly as well? I want a House of Commons that is respected across the world, which means our discourse needs to be kinder, more tolerant, more well-mannered. In other words, we should set an example in the way we debate and behave. In other words, we should be a bit more like Joe. And of course, hopefully that I had an apprenticeship of nine years of being Deputy Speaker. I thought that was a long time until I realised the King had done over 70 years of apprenticeship. <laughs> so I think I'm in good company. So please, showing that we have far more in common with each other than things divide us. Please, let us remember that. And thank you for allowing me to share your evening. It means so much to me. Thank you for listening. Speaker, thank you uh, for your words and for uh, the grace with which you hold your office. You are an example, uh, not only to members of Parliament, but to us outside too, and we appreciate it very much indeed. Thank you. Um, after the service, uh, as is customary at St Matthews, there is going to be a party. Um, now, the choir are very reluctant to have a drink, I know, at the end of the day, but I hope on this occasion uh, they will come and join us. It is the end of term for them. We've had wonderful music at the, under the direction of Nigel, aided ably uh, by Sam. This is his last choral even song with us. He's about to go to Chelmsford Cathedral. Now, you won't know where Chelmsford is, many of you, um, but it's in the east. Um, <laughs> next, door, next one along from London. And so we wish uh, Sam every blessing as he moves on to Chelmsford. But thank you to Nigel, to Sam, to the choir for all you give us week after week. And now you will enter a well-deserved period of rest. I think we should give you a round of applause. <laughs> So please do join us uh, in the hall and in the garden afterwards, if you'd like, if you can, uh, for uh, some uh, a glass of wine. And we sing now our final hymn, Angel Voices.
The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Salve Regina.